Welcome, Ben Runner. The glory days of the video game arcade might be a long way behind us, sadly, but they certainly haven't been forgotten. And in this video, I'm going to take you back nearly 30 years to those heady days that played such an important part in our youth. The year is 1992, and we're all present at one of the greatest times in coin op video game history. You won't find any fruit machines, penny pushers, or, or fixed prize machines here. These are the true arcade classics that lit up dingy smoke filled rooms, sat on stained carpets whilst they delighted audiences, and drained people's pockets of all their spare change. Names like Sega, Atari, Konami, Midway and Capcom have become synonymous with gaming and so it would be no surprise to see them feature heavily in this video. This is where many of today's popular franchises started, multiple innovations took place and the genres that we know and love today were formed. All of these titles play every bit as well today as they did back then and deserve to be remembered as true classics in the annals of video game history. The theme of this year was definitely scrolling beat-em-ups. After the release of Capcom's Final Fight, the genre simply exploded. In fact, around half this list is made up of them, and there are plenty I left out too. This would also be the peak of the craze, as it would be another Capcom game in Street Fighter 2, as well as a certain digitised bloodfest that's just got a new movie, that would flip the coin to fighting games. Even without all the beat-em-ups, there's still plenty of fun to be had in 1992 though. So let's have a look at all the contenders, shall we? Given that 1992 was the year of the beat em up, it only seems right that we start with this one. This scrolling brawler based on the popular French comic strip isn't just one of the many on this list in that genre though, it's also one of the many by Konami as they continue to milk the concept of their hugely popular Turtles and Simpsons games for everything it was worth. Asterix is incredibly similar to both those games in the gameplay stakes, but it's certainly no bad thing and people who grew up enjoying the escapades of Asterix and Obelix, like me, would never tire of duffing up those idiotic Roman soldiers. Mad Dog McCree was a huge hit for American laser games, giving the format made famous by Dragon Slayer a new lease of life. They were quick to capitalise on the concept, producing a series of spin-offs and sequels. Indeed, Mad Dog McCree 2, The Lost Gold, was also released in this year too. But one of the most interesting is definitely Space Pirates, which took the light gun shooter into the world of science fiction. You'll see most of the same things here, dodgy acting, rubbish special effects and more than a few unfair deaths, but you still have fun trying to make it through each scene. Anyone who frequented arcades in the early 90s will remember Namco's stunning 3D shooter up Starblade with its fully immersive cabinet. The game's huge success saw the company develop so much for follow-up in Galaxian 3, which also serves as a rather bizarre sequel to the Galaxian Galaga franchise too. The game was enclosed in an even more immersive cabinet that now supported multiple players, but the System 21 3D hardware was gone in favour of a new Laserdisc system that only added to the wow factor. Sadly, this game can never be fully replicated by our emulation due to its design. The big difference between Bucky O'Hare and the other Konami side scrollers in this list is that rather than being just another scrolling beat em up, this one is more of a run and gun style affair. That said, many of the other themes are the same as its Konami brethren such as the level structures with endless enemies and the huge hard to beat bosses. His friends in the animation that join him are Jenny the Cat, Dead Eye Duck and Blinky the Android. All the characters including the enemies are voiced by the original actors, making it even more authentic to its source material and a real fan pleaser. It's hard to believe that Cosmo Gang was the first puzzle game ever released by Namco. But that's not the only interesting piece of trivia connected to this coin op, as the eagle eyed among you will no doubt realise that this is the exact same game as Pack Attack. That's right, this game is completely rebranded for the West to start everyone's favourite pill popper. The gameplay will be pretty familiar for the most part, removing lines from a pit like Tetris, but the way you have to remove the little characters that get in the way is certainly very original. Puzzle game fans will soon find themselves addicted. The 
final game in the R-Type Arcade Trilogy, Leo deviates greatly from the gameplay of his predecessors by removing the use of both the Force Pod and Wave Cannon. The new weapons found here are called Force Bits and the Bit Shot. Unlike previous power-ups, these are capable of firing either forwards or backwards, with the Bit Shot able to detach from the ship and collide with the nearest enemy. R-Type Leo consists of six stages and is also the first type in the series to allow two players to enjoy the game simultaneously. Shoot em up fans should be checking this one out. Guardians of the Hood actually started life as Pit Fighter 2, a sequel to Atari's hugely popular digitised fighting game from two years previous. However, as this one takes the form of a scrolling beat-em-up instead, the decision was made to change the title. You'll recognise many of the same graphical techniques though, with fully digitised sprites and backgrounds, scaling effects and motion captured animation. But there's a new set of characters and the gameplay is obviously quite different. It might seem a little janky by today's standards, but Guardians of the Hood was pretty groundbreaking. Perhaps better known to many Western gamers as Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, the Puyo Puyo franchise is still going strong to this day. But this is the original title, and this game pairs of differently coloured beans dropped from above, a bit like Columns or Tetris, and the player has to drop them down into the pit below. You can rotate the colours round so you can better match them up, and when four or more eggs of the same colour touch each other, either horizontally or vertically, they vanish and you'll dump some bad beans onto your opponent. Poyo Poyo is one seriously addictive puzzle game. Now, just seeing the arcade flyer you know when the game came out, you'd be excused for thinking that G.I. Joe was going to be just another generic scrolling beat-em-up using the Turtles template. So when you discover that it's a totally different type of game, you become pretty excited. But once you start playing this into the screen running gunner, you'll be even more so. G.I. Joe is an all-action arcade experience, that supports up to four players and is more than a fitting use of the license. It's not the most well known game on this list, but it's undoubtedly one of the best. Whilst there was a Golden Axe 2 on the Mega Drive, Return of the Death Adder is the true arcade sequel to Sega's classic Slash em Up. I'd also argue that it's one of Sega's most underrated and underappreciated arcade games. Though it features the same gameplay style, we now have new cast of characters and support for up to four players to play at once. Upgrades to the visuals, the range of attacks and magic are also very noticeable and there's an epic range of enemies to defeat too. If you love the original Golden Axe then you're going to adore this worthy follow up just as much. The sequel to Smash TV, in Total Carnage one or two players can assume the roles of Captain Carnage and Major Mayhem in a frantic assault against the kamikaze forces of General Akboob. There's an unending and often overwhelming number of enemies pursuing the heroes at all times. Thankfully there are also many power-ups, bombs and even missile strikes to assist the player on their way to the final boss himself. Along the way you must try to rescue civilians and collect all the valuable items left lying around. It might be brutally hard, but it's also immensely enjoyable. A scrolling beat-em-up from the same people who brought us Cabal and Toki, this game is certainly not original. But that's no bad thing here. For the most part, this game is just another Final Fight clone, but a very good one at that. In typical scrolling beat-em-up fashion, you travel through the city from left to right, beating up any and all enemies you encounter. There are five stages with a boss at the end of each one and the usual pickups. I've always had a real soft spot for Legionnaire, and while it's far from original, it's a highly enjoyable coin op that offers a pretty decent challenge too. This is one of two sequels to Taito's original football champ game from two years previous. As the name already suggests, this one not only features international teams from the European continent and was cunningly released to coincide with the European Football Championship that happened that very same year in Sweden and was won by Denmark. Apart from the minor changes to the team lineup and some renamed players, the gameplay is exactly the same. You still have those amazing visuals that zoom in and out of the action and those outlandish abilities such as super shots and mega tackles.
When Konami first released Lethal Enforcers into the arcades in 1992, it caused quite a storm in the media, as it allowed you to shoot photorealistic enemies. This publicity followed it onto the home formats, as it became the first game to get a mature audience's rating in America. In the game you play as a cop trying to clean up the city, pretty standard stuff really, and can pick up a variety of different weapons throughout the game. Set over five levels taken straight out of a cheesy cop movie, the realistic gritty setting of Lethal Enforcers definitely helps set it apart from similar gun games. It seemed that everyone else was copying Final Fight and Irem didn't want to feel left out, so came up with Undercover Cops. While there is certainly nothing original about the game, it does have quite a unique look to it. The gritty street setting is a lot less colourful and more muted than similar titles, with a strong element of urban decay to it. Another thing I like is that you can break large parts of the scenery around you and then use it as a weapon to beat your foes. There's something pretty wild and outlandish about picking up a huge girder and then wrapping it around somebody's head. The third Outrun game to be released by Sega in the arcades, there were loads more if we count home releases, Outrunners is also a title that I have great memories of. In fact, I would easily count it amongst my all time favourite Sega arcade games, I always felt that it is criminally underrated. This arcade game takes the already winning formula of Outrun and ups the visuals to a whole new level, with pre-rendered cars and scenery on top of the already impressive scaling effects. It returns to the multiple route structure that was moved in Turbo Outrun and also adds a new car selection too. It's safe to say that the original Street Fighter 2 coin-op was a pretty big deal when it was released in 1991. Capcom were very keen to capitalise on that and came back the year after with this revised edition, which is actually the one that people seem to best remember. Also known as Hyper Fighting, this new subtitle alluded to one of the best new features, a much faster speed setting. But by far the best revision to the game was the ability to play as the four bosses, Vega, Bullrock, Sagat and of course M. Bison. You could also both choose the same fighter in two player mode now too. There have been many games based on the ever popular X-Men franchise over the years, but this 1992 Konami coin-op has to be the best. The original arcade cabinet supported up to four players, and like several other games on this list, also used the exact same hardware as the hugely popular Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You can choose between six different X-Men in Cyclops, Colossus, Wolverine, Dazzler, Nightcrawler and Storm, each with their own abilities. There's an even later deluxe version of the game too that features twin screens and supports up to six players in total. Racing games have always been a popular staple of the arcades. In actual fact, they're one of the few genres that you'll still find in today's prize ticket dominated venues. But in 1992, Sega drastically changed the landscape in this field by releasing the highly acclaimed Virtua Racing. Although it wasn't the first driving game to use 3D polygon graphics that Accolade goes to Atari's hard driving, it was the first to use them in a true arcade racer. It also featured multiple camera angles, three very distinct tracks and a huge widescreen display. Often cloned but rarely bettered, Virtua Racing is another bona fide Sega classic. Midway's Mortal Kombat revolutionised the fighting game genre when it first hit arcades. It threw away the cartoon-like animated sprites of Street Fighter 2 and replaced them with digitised fighters that used motion capture to perform every action. But the realistic looks were not the only thing it added, there was something even more real to life. Blood. This wasn't all though, it increased the gore factor further by adding another new feature to fighting games, finishing moves. Ok the gameplay wasn't very complex, but that was improved by the sequels and there's no doubt in this game's legacy. And that rounds up my look at the greatest arcade games of 1992. Are there any others you can think of that should have made the list, or do you disagree with any of the entries that I did include? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. But before I go though, I must thank all of my loyal patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. However, I must give special thanks to the following patrons in particular for their much appreciated pledges. Mitchell Valentino, James Taylor, Neptune, Chaotic, Seth Robinson, Carl Olsen, Dos Gamer Man, Tiago Piero Dos Santos Silva and Electron Star Collapse. 
If you also want to help support all my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now. You can get access to a host of extra content, including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights, and much more besides. I've been the lad, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.